But I want to come back again to recovery from COVID and the issue of public sector debt. Mm. Um, I think the whole of the West now faces horrendous debt levels. I think they're quite threatening. I see George Schultz writing brilliant articles. I did. I read that article, the last article mm. he penned before yeah. he died. So mm. remarkable man at the age of 100. Yeah. And I just want to tease those issues out. If we can go back to 1996, I, and I've said this before and people have probably heard me, but mm. one of the first things he said at our first cabinet meetings, we're going to stop the intergenerational theft. We want to wind back this debt and the uh, never-ending deficits that are confronting us. It was at that stage around 19% of GDP. You felt very strongly about the importance yeah. of getting public sector debt under control. Can you just recap why you felt then and presumably still feel that this really matters because there's a lot of evidence around now suggesting that people have lost the understanding of why it's important to run public finances very carefully and prudently. Well, I certainly remember that first cabinet meeting. I said all of those things, but I also said uh, that uh, every area of government spending had to make a contribution, except except defence. Defence, because defence yeah, had been nice. starved of money yeah. uh, under the previous government, and uh, I felt we had to invest more. Mm. Now. But why is it so important? It's, it's, it's a simple proposition that no country can live beyond its means, that um, uh, in, in ev ultimately if you spend as a nation beyond your capacity, you lose control of the economy, inflationary press pressures re-emerge. And the big danger we have at the moment is that because we haven't had inflation for a long time and because um, there was a lot of spending in the wake of the global financial crisis, but it didn't reignite inflation. There's a dangerous belief that it can never come back. Now, that's not right. It can come back. And the burden of that article that you mentioned, uh, that George Schultz and others wrote, was that it can come back. And he spoke of the early 60s when uh, the problems of high inflation were being generated, but not fully realised. And also another splendid article in the Financial Times by Martin Wolf that reproduced in our Fin Review, making the same argument. So I am concerned that we've become in complacent about this. But having said that, I thought what the government did was right. And it is true, as Josh Frydenberg has said on a couple of occasions publicly that he spoke to me about it. And I said, there's no ideology in this. Uh, we, we are closing down the economy, but mm. meaning the government. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, whereas mm. um, in recessions, it's closed down indirectly, I suppose, by the government for bringing in the wrong policies, but directly it's not. It's closed down by private sector decisions. But we said to the private sector, you've got to stop doing business. You've got to stop yeah. earning an income. Yeah. Now, in those, unprecedented, really. And unprecedented. In those circumstances, yeah. you cannot yeah. um, uh, walk away from uh, providing uh, support. And I think the support the government provided was right. I mean, you can argue about this or that um, uh, quantum, but, but I think overall, and, and it has so far proved successful because both the Treasury and the bank and other commentators have said that where the unemployment has been... Yeah, not as high as expected. The recovery mm. has been more rapid than expected. And overall, we're, we're coming out and it appears to be working. Now, as for the timing, and I think the government's recent announcement about increasing the unemployment benefit, uh, or job seeker, as it's now called, uh, something that I yeah, thought a while ago might have been done because uh, you have to look after people who, through no fault of their own, uh, 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 need help. But we had to do what the government did, but having done it, it has to stick to uh, the way back. Of, uh, you can't indefinitely extend emergency measures. Other, and, and, and that's the great danger that we face. That, yes. and, and, and the other great danger we have to worry about, because the American economy dominates all, is whether there will be too much stimulus in the United States. Now, the American economy is recovering very well. It's huge. It's less regulated than just about any other economy. Therefore, its recovery capacity uh, is, is greater. Uh, but the new administration has got trillions yes. 
of dollars on the table of, of extra stimulus. And there's a real worry, and it was at the root of those two columns that we spoke about a moment ago, that it might be too much. Mm. And because once the inflation bottle, uh, inflation journey gets out of the bottle in the United States now, I know people say, what on earth is he talking about inflation getting, you know, becoming a problem that hasn't been a problem for ages and it's not likely to be? Well, uh, people would have maybe thought of that in the, in, in the 60s. And, and of course, it just became not a problem, but a nightmare uh, in the 1970s. And it took interest rates at crushingly high levels, implemented mm. and initially by Paul Volcker, who's chairman of the Fed, and, and to squeeze inflation out of the system. Yes, it's worth remembering that, you know, if you get inflation back again, which I think <clears> is highly possible. It's possible, you know, yes. But um, it drives interest rates. And that $96 billion worth of debt that we used to talk about, one of the things that we then followed on with as we got it under control was the amount of interest we were saving the taxpayer. That oh, let us build yeah. hospitals and roads and yeah, what yeah, have yeah, you. Yeah, that, it was 7 or $8 billion that we I saved. It was an enormous... But mind you, the... The saving was higher because the interest rate... Was That's my to, point. Yeah, it is. It was, and there's a real threat there if they, interest rates start to rise again mm. because of inflation. Well, if you it know, started rising, rise again, you've got to borrow at the higher rates when, when, yeah. when, when the borrowings at the lower rates mature. That's a, yes. That is a problem. That is potentially a massive problem for America mm. too. But just one thing that I'd be very interested in... Now, I'm happy to that. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow, but, but you can never assume... Mm that, that um, uh, uh, inflation has been um, The abolished. genie put back in the bottle forever. No, no, you never assume that. I just would be interested in views on one thing. There's a view in some quarters that we have actually had inflation. It's been in asset prices. Oh, I think that's right. And that that actually is opening up something that's really, it goes back to that very, it was the first time I'd heard the term used at that first cabinet meeting, intergenerational theft. It's hard for young people now. Oh, well, it, it, buying, buying the first house, mm. Is, 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 a, is, is a huge difficulty. Although, mind you, 25 years ago, buying a first house involved paying a much higher interest rate than you do now. Yes. And, and so you have to be a little judicious um, uh, with, with the time frames when you mount arguments such as this. But there's no doubt that um, one of the reasons there appears to be a boom in house prices is the low interest rates. You can borrow money at ridiculously low interest rates. Uh, equally, you don't get paid much if you leave your money in the bank. And I think one of the contributions being made to this house price inflation is uh, a lot of retired people with a few bob, to use that Australian expression, but who've never been in, in on the share market. Mm. Um, uh, the rate of return on on, on an interest-bearing deposit is is, is 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 just derisory. So you see a better return in buying a property uh, and and renting it out. Yes, a, a far better mm. return mm. Uh, and and more people of, of modest but comfortable means are doing that. And there's a lot of them in Australia because uh, uh, we have a lot of people who. Um, you know, might loosely be called comfortable middle class people, but they've accumulated at some uh, assets and, and want to use their money in a sensible, cautious way, getting nothing from an interest bearing deposit, whereas five or six years ago they'd have got something. Yes. And they'd have been mm. happy with that. Mm. Mm. But they're not anymore for obvious reasons. Now, those things are all playing into it. And, and, and of course, in the United States, what quantitative easing or uh, you know, printing, print, printing money. money or bond buying, whatever yeah. you want to call it, uh, has uh, led to an inflation in, and, and it's made the very wealthy even wealthier yeah. because they have uh, taken advantage of that to uh, invest on the stock market and do all sorts of things. Different circumstance, but it all feeds into our own economic position simply because of the dominance of the American economy. Now, to come back to our agreed position that the government, government's plural, and the Commonwealth government have handled the, you know, COVID incredibly well on, on the whole. On the whole, um, yeah. And it, they were right to open the checkbook. It had to be done. Mm. Uh, the reality is, of course, though, that we now face a situation where we've accumulated a very substantial debt that's going to grow. We're mm. on our way towards a trillion or so, uh, which is pretty substantial. 
It's a fair chunk of GDP. It's a very big chunk of and mm. and it will not be easy. Its repayment no. will involve an enormous amount of discipline in relation to future claims, uh, but also in unwinding the emergency measures. Uh, and it will also rely very heavily on um, continued economic growth. Yes. And uh, it was in the end, uh, if the best response is to grow our way out of the deficits. And uh, that comes you know, again to the question of what, what economic changes might be needed, what regulatory, what reform might be needed uh, to spur that growth. Now, um, right at the moment, um, big economic changes are not on the agenda simply because we've got you know, a, 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 a more than a bite-sized economic challenge in handling the, the pandemic. But we have to return to things like whether there are aspects of our taxation system that need changing uh, to the extent that some of the um, re-regulation of the labour market that occurred uh, over the last occurred over the last ten or fifteen years should be reversed. Uh, it still it, it surprises me how much resistance there is to uh, the government's industrial relations legislation. It's quite modest what it's proposing. Thank you for watching this episode. We appreciate your support. If you value vital conversations like this one be sure to subscribe to the channel there and also click the notification bell to stay up to date with new releases.